Yes, I understand that this country had some shitty beginnings. Yes, people in this country, during the founding of this country, did some horrible shit. They treated people like shit. They committed genocide. Awful stuff. There is quite literally nothing to be proud of when it comes to the methodology or methodologies used against other cultures when this country was founded. Now, being that I've said that, don't respond to me saying, oh, well, freedom and liberty and all of that stuff. Don't preach to me about that stuff, because I understand that there were some good values within there. But I understand that the methodology or methodologies that were used against other cultures were just absolutely atrocious. Yes, I understand that 223 out of 240 years this country has been around, we've been at war. Yes, I understand that no matter who we have as president, even if Bernie was president, this warring would continue, and the military-industrial complex is something that we're just not able to touch or do a damn thing about. Yes, I understand that our government is pretty damn corrupt, and the people who have the power, whom we didn't actually elect, we elected the people who elected them, are the ones with the largest agendas. It's not a gay agenda, it's not a black agenda, it's not a women's agenda. It's stuff that's a lot more sinister, quite frankly. And most of it is so they can have more money and more power, because that's what it's about. And yes, I understand that we are led around by consumerism and materialism. Yes, I understand that consumerism promotes wastefulness. Yes, I understand that there are problems in our society, some major ones. But if you get to criticize me, then I get to criticize you. If you get to criticize my culture, then I get to criticize your culture. And no, I don't care if my being white puts me in some sort of privileged class. Okay, white people are in the majority in this country, white culture is in the majority in this country, and I'm not going to feel guilty about it. I treat people equally and shouldn't have to be brainwashed into thinking that I need to coddle any one particular group. I do not share this belief that's so popular right now that if you're white, that you need to put all other cultures above your own. Your ancestors were mistreated. Don't blame me for that. At least you're not in that situation now. You know, at least you didn't go through that. My grandmother was very abusive. She was abused when she was growing up. She had adopted parents who adopted her just so she could be their work slave. Does that mean her abusive behavior should have been coddled? If you think everyone should criticize the straight white male cisgender demographic, but don't think the straight white male cisgender demographic should have the right to criticize back, go fuck your double standards, please. Practice what you preach, asshole. If you get to preach to me, then I get to preach to you. Period. As I may care at least a little bit about your feelings, I don't care about your religion of white guilt that is basically, if you're white, this coddling and almost worshipping of every other culture but your own. I don't care about that, and I don't care about the opposite, where people basically want everyone to worship white culture. That's a bunch of crap, too. To anyone of any culture, if we're having a conversation, and you use your pride in your culture as some sort of argument, then I get to do the same thing about my culture. And that doesn't make me racist. I'm not the type of person to take pride in things I haven't accomplished. But if you're going to act like you're the shit because of your culture, then I get to do the same about mine. This should not be a one-way street. Again, I'm not one to go around taking pride in things I haven't accomplished. I think taking pride in those things is silly. But if you flaunt something that's not very meaningful, as if it's some sort of an argument, then I get to do the same thing. So again, I understand that this country had some really shitty beginnings. Yes, people in this country, back when it was founded, did some horrible things, committed genocide, treated a whole... treated everyone who wasn't one of the settlers like shit. 
And again, there is nothing to be proud of when it comes to the methodology or methodologies that were used against other cultures when this country was founded. But it seems that since this country was founded by white people, then according to television media and social media and sociology studies and social justice warriors, that I as a white person should feel bad about things I had nothing to do with. If in a conversation you start pushing forth that I should be looking at the way this country was founded as if it's some sort of an argument, you are attempting to push white guilt onto me, and I don't appreciate it very much. Shame on you for doing that. Seriously, shame on you. There are some ways of life that are incompatible with just about this whole country. When I try to make a general description of what demographics fit a religiously influenced lifestyle that I dislike, and you know exactly what I'm talking about, you shouldn't pretend otherwise. You shouldn't be getting on your moral high horse at that time, nor should you go into a teacher mode. This new religion is one that internally makes you say to yourself, I'm a piece of shit because I live here and I'm white. That kind of emotional argument against and plea against holding other cultures to the same standards as your own, your religion that essentially pushes that you should put all other cultures above your own, you really can't let that get in the way of you understanding when I make a generalization in order to make a point. If you do let that get in the way, and you can't process what someone is saying unless they word it a certain way, quite frankly, I wonder whether you have a low IQ. Because part of intelligence is being able to figure out a situation with very little information, for being able to match patterns. And communication is very largely about matching patterns. And at that point where you feel that you are offended at what I'm saying because I did make a generalization, even though you know that it's a generalization, at that point, that is certainly not the time that you preach to me about and become a teacher and teach me about the specifics of that culture. So in your eyes, I won't have an excuse for being what you consider offensive for making a generalized statement. And in that sort of scenario, if I was to try to show that, yes, I already know about this stuff, I was just making a generalized statement, but I go into any detail further about what I know about it, that'll be the time that you start to go into even more specific things. And it will be infinite. No matter what I say that I know about the situation, you will just continue with more details as if it furthers the conversation about what was originally being talked about. So if I get more specific after you get more specific, you'll respond by getting even more specific because you're not actually interested in having a discussion. You're pretty much only interested in teaching me about something so you can feel more intelligent. When I start seeing this happen over and over again, that's the time that I say, you win, and just let them win the discussion. I don't say it as you win because then they'll think I'm being sarcastic. So I just let them win the discussion because it's never going to go anywhere. I mean, being more specific in your labels doesn't mean that I've lost the discussion or that I have no point in what I was saying. And if I tell you why I say you win the discussion, you'll just take it as some opportunity to try to gloat and talk about how much better you think you are than everyone else. You're better than other people because you can memorize an incredible amount of labels. You know, just like people who are perfect at grammar and spelling like to smear it in people's faces and use it as some sort of argument against what the other person is saying. So fine, you know, I'll let you win. You don't really want to take the discussion any further anyway. I'm going to explain a little bit more about what I mean about someone feeling like it's their time to teach me about the specifics of something that doesn't actually add anything to the discussion at all. So if I start talking to a musician about a 1-4-5 progression, like, you know, Louie Louie, 1-1-1, 4-4-5-5-5, 4 one one you know, that sort of thing, right? I bring that up in order to talk about a discussion about something else, that is not the time for the other musician to give me a music theory lesson because I said something in a quick fashion in order to discuss a subject that I really wanted to talk about. 
So in that case, that musician isn't stupid. They're just in a teaching mode and that's all they want to really do. So in that kind of case, no matter what I do or what I say, this individual wants to teach me something, no matter what it is. I guess he's really excited about teaching. No, the reality is he just wants to feel intelligent at the time. I didn't ask for him to be a music theory teacher, I just wanted to talk about a subject that was related to a 145 song. But now the discussion is about music theory, and everything that I really wanted to talk about is lost, and I've forgotten what it is. If I was to have interrupted him and told him that, hey, I just mentioned this in passing so I could talk about something I really wanted to talk about, well, I'm just not listening to him uh, and, and all this time he's taken to explain something. And these things that he wanted to explain are all the correct labels for everything music theory oriented. For him to explain as many labels as possible. If I was to have interrupted and told him that I already know about these things and give some examples, it still won't be specific enough and he'll have to be even more tedious with proudly displaying that he knows all these different labels in regards to music theory. No, let's not actually talk about something. He needs to tediously teach me about something that he thinks I don't know, but I already know. But he has to say it because I made a generalization in something that I was saying. I used a phrase that wasn't very descriptive. Well, he really educated me, let me tell you. So this sort of thing is what people often do when someone mentions behaviors they find distasteful in other cultures. If you're going to get upset because I didn't get all specific as to what very nitty-gritty, meticulously described particular demographic I'm talking about, you will most likely never be satisfied the specifics will go on forever, and at some point it will be an argument of infinite regress. I have no patience for infinite regress, nor any sort of quest to be the one with the most specifics. It's the Specifical Olympics! Uh, no thanks. Now, if you have an answer to a problem, and you think that being more specific can get us closer to the answer, then it'd be nice if you took the time to explain what your answer is, and at that point, if I didn't understand, and I ask for more specifics, then that's the time to go into more specifics. Don't treat me like I don't know anything about the situation just because I made a generalization. For instance, I get bored to death with listening to some, I repeat, some British, educated British conversations about a number of subjects. You know, I'm like, I'll get, get on with it, come on, get on with it, you know? Get on with it. I will fall asleep listening to some stereotypical educated British person prepare their statements or opinions for a ridiculously long period of time just to have it turn out that what I thought was them preparing their statements or opinions was actually their opinions. And I didn't get a damn thing from it. And I'm just like, Jesus fucking Christ, just state your opinion. State your views. Oh well, it's, it's more complex than that. I have to talk for five minutes just to tell you that I like the color pink. Yes, yes, it's so complex. Everything is complex. Holding up a finger is complex if you think and talk about it the right way. I breathed in. Such a huge occurrence to breathe in. Do you know what's happening every time you breathe in? I mean, yes, you can make any subject really complex. I was known to do that all the fucking time in my 20s when it comes to technology. I bored people. I eventually learned what people get bored with. And it's not even necessarily about attention spans. It's about not drawing things out to ridiculous levels. I mean, if someone asks you how something works, then that's fine. And you'll usually get someone to listen if you are answering someone's request to get more information. That is, unless your explanation is too tedious and you take five minutes to explain a color. My big thing is to explain things in a way that's understood the most and as quickly as possible. When you can't understand what someone is saying because they're not getting specific enough, and what they're saying is pretty fucking obvious, then it is at this point that being an intellectual and having an intellectual philosophy can get in the way of you understanding other people. If you respond to that by saying, well, I don't understand stupid people, 
Well, my response to that is that the words someone chooses to explain something isn't an indicator of his or her or the non-binary person's intelligence. Have a nice day.